One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening. Welcome to the main news broadcast this hour here on ZNBC TV One with the news. My name is Penifa Nirenda alongside Pastor Samson Mwale. Let's look at the top stories. President Ed Galungu has urged Zambians to use Easter as a special season to reflect on how they can show love, forgiveness, compassion and renewed hope for the, lo for the less privileged. Minister of Foreign Affairs Joe Malangi says the impeachment motion by the opposition UPND has the potential to tarnish the image of the presidency and the country to the international community. Over 2,000 iron sheets procured by the government through the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit for the flood victims in Chama District, Muchinga Province, have been distributed. And the Football Association of Zambia has refuted reports that it will not table the matter of its expelled Vice President Richard Kazala at the association's annual general meeting tomorrow. And other news in detail. President Edgar Lungu has urged Zambians to use Easter as a special season to reflect on how they can show love, forgiveness, compassion, and renewed hope for the less privileged. The president says this Easter celebration should fill the lives of everyone with peace and keep the nation united. President Lungu further says Zambians must continue asking the Lord to keep the country united and lead Zambia to posterity. The head of state said this in his Easter message to Zambians. And President Lungu says the Easter season reaffirms faith that the Lord can overcome any challenges, adding that the country should always look to him for guidance. The president also states that leaders must realize that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus signifies a new beginning and a time to find solutions to many challenges the nation is facing. This is contained in a statement made available to ZNBC News by Special Assistant to the President for Press and Public Relations, Amos Chanda. Meanwhile, Mary Immaculate Catholic Parish Priest Father Sidney Msonda says Easter is not just another holiday, but a time to pray and reflect on the love that Jesus showed by dying to liberate the world. Father Msonda has since urged the public to celebrate this period by spending time in the house of God and staying away from illicit activities. Mary Kachepa has more in the following report. <laughs> as I remember the time that Jesus Christ was given as ransom to free the world from sin and to reconcile man with God. Christians around the globe commemorate Easter by spending time in the house of prayer. Chimfwembe Dipa, a youth, shares what Easter means to her. Easter means a lot to me because I think this is the only time we can uh, have a chance to like gather with your family and celebrate Jesus. And like partying, going nightclubs, because most of people my age like going to clubs and stuff like during this period. But then I think we should all just be with our families, be at church, and respect the holiday. And Dr. Richard Mwinga, an elder from Salvation Army, counsels the young people against indulging in illicit activities during the Easter holiday. I want to strongly advise the youth that it's important to remember God in the days of the youth. 
it is extremely important because you come to establish the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not good for people just to go on spending their time maybe watching uh, wrong things, doing wrong things, uh, or maybe murdering people, or doing things that are very bad to the society. This is the time of reflection because God has come to reconcile people because of the sins that they have committed against him. Salvation Army Nirvana Temple pastor in charge, Captain Russell Muzembo, weighs in on the significance of Easter. You know that we had no life before Christ came. We were separated from God before Christ came because of the sin of our forefathers. And so Easter itself actually uh, brings out, let me say, let me just mention three of the things that Easter brings out. The first one is the reconciliation. You know what it means to reconcile? It means they have, they, 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 there was a broken relationship. And so during this Easter, we see that God himself is reconciling the world to himself. Okay? Bringing back, you know, pleading with man. Because we see Christ coming down from heaven. Bringing himself down living the splendor of heaven all for us reconciliation and so we are reconciled apart from that the significance of easter is that during this period it was during this period that man received freedom we were imprisoned by sin and mary immaculate catholic parish priest father sydney musonda outlines activities that his church has lined up for easter we are today here at our parish at Mary Immaculate. We are celebrating Good Friday. And Good Friday is simply the day we commemorate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was captured, tried, and died. So we have gathered as a people of God just to commemorate that with prayers, with fasting, and abstinence. And we know that after Jesus died, he was in the tomb for three days and then he rose again. Then tomorrow in the evening we'll reconvene back and celebrate the great Easter story. Easter period is preceded by the commemoration of Palm Sunday, Christians from which is observed life in memory of the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Mary Kachepa, ZNBC News, Lusaka. And a Quito-based Catholic priest says Christians must celebrate this year's Easter period with a focus on protecting women and girls from abuse. Bucci, Paris priest in charge, Wisdom Sonda, says women deserve to be celebrated and loved because they are behind many successes men have scored in the world. Speaking during a march past to mark Good Friday in Quito this morning, Father Sonda urged men to respect women and celebrate their lives. Poshalala has more in this report. It is a day believed to mark the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on the cross and his death on the Calvary. Christians around the globe firmly believe that Jesus was crucified on Good Friday and rose again three days later on Easter. And in Quito, the faithful have marked it with a march past. Congregants from the Catholic Church have marked the day with prayers. The leadership at Puchi Parish used the occasion to preach about peace between men and women. Uchindike vana mayo pandu mchinshi wafumine kulilesa umuine ukupitila mkusonda mayo maria ukutila afiale umulubushi uwaishire tulubula. Echo vashtata na bonze tuweshe ukupela umuchinshi vanyinefwe uwabalina. This Easter period has been dedicated to the protection of women. Yes, women are very important, as you see in the, in the tradition, Jewish tradition, women were not respected much. Even the multiplication of loaves, when the men were counted. Now, when we see that Jesus depict, God depicts Mary as the mother of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we see that the view of looking at the woman changes immediately. She becomes the mother, not only of the Christian, but of the world. Because now we are looking at uh, believing in Jesus Christ as our brother who saved us. His mother becomes our mother by faith. 
and then she's at the same time the, the new eve. Festivities in the Easter week continue in the coming days with Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. Poshalala, ZNBC News in Kitwe. Minister of Foreign Affairs Joe Melangi says the impeachment motion by the opposition UPND has the potential to tarnish the image of the presidency and the country to the international community. Mr. Melangi says the impeachment motion is ill-intended and meant to dilute investor confidence in the country. Ambassador Melangi, however, says the motion is an exercise in futility. He has accused the UPND of deliberately wanting to derail President Edgar Lungu's vision to develop the country. Ambassador Malangi who is also quite a member of parliament, was speaking after touring the ablution blocks at the Koa Belt University this afternoon. Meanwhile, Ambassador Malangi says upgrades to the sanitary infrastructure at the Koa Belt University in Kitwe will continue. He says government will sustain the rehabilitation of toilets and other sanitary facilities at the institution to create an enabling learning environment for the students. Collins Chama reports. The CBU started arriving last weekend. The Riverside campus has reopened after renovation to ablation blocks following the outbreak of cholera in the country early this year. And Kwacha Member of Parliament Joe Malangi has toured toilets and other facilities. Ambassador Malangi has in the past made donations of toilet pans and cisterns towards the ablution upgrades at the institution. The parliamentarian wants to be a rest with the status quo of sanitary facilities here. This short period that they were um, away from school is not sufficient for us to uh, cover all the ablution blocks, but it is a continuous uh, program that we're going to maintain to make sure that uh, our children are in proper um, hab habitable uh, uh, situation and as opposed to the way the uh, sanitary uh, facilities were before. Ambassador Malangi, who is also Foreign Affairs Minister, also touched on matters of national importance. We must be serious about uh, these matters. You know, we are basically diluting the decorum of uh, um, the House because impeachment must come with very serious um, uh, reasons that when put on the table, any normal member of parliament would want to use that. And I will tell you that um, this same um, impeachment issue, the, intention, it, it, the, the intentions which are there are ill intentions, basically to tarnish the name, not only the president, but the country. Because if you are an investor, you want to come to Zambia and you hear that the president is um, having an impeachment motion in, in, in parliament, you are, you are going to wait. You are not going to directly come to uh, put your money where you are doubting the uh, um, um, investment uh, uh, um, climate in a country. So basically they want to bring confusion so that they derail uh, um, the president's vision for um, the national development and we are not going to condone that. And the, or, of course we know, even the numbers, it is a mere academic exercise, it, even the numbers, where, where would they get the numbers? Because uh, government has got the numbers in parliament and they've got, President Lungo has got numbers even outside. So it's a non-startup to say. Collins Chama, ZNBC News in Kitwe. And some opposition political parties have called on Zambians to reject the impeachment motion by the UPND. Zambia Direct Democracy Federal Party Vice President Charles Kafumbo, representing other political parties, says the impeachment motion does not have the interests of the Zambian people. Mr. Kafumbo says the dictatorial conduct by the UPND to the Speaker of the National Assembly to speedily table or move the motion is not acceptable. He says despite the UPND exercising their constitutional right, they should put the interests of Zambians first. He said this at a media briefing in Lusaka today. And Zambia Direct Democracy Movement ZDDM President Edwin Sakala notes that there is no need for the Commonwealth to facilitate for national dialogue in Zambia because the country can handle its own affairs. I'm very concerned with the dictatorial conduct of the European where they want to detect the Speaker of the National Assembly to speedily table or move the motion 
to impeach President Edward Jamaica. This detection will not be allowed in our country also. We are also very aware that the European Union want to exercise their constitutional right. That will not be even the one who is speaking to you, the persons that are there, can exercise their constitutional rights. But it is important that the PND should put Zambia's interests first. What is very important is, like, for example, on the question of dialogue, uh, we have got nothing against dialogue. All along, we have resolved our problems through dialogue. But the problem which we have right now is to have another country, the Commonwealth, coming to invent a will, where we already have a will. We believe that we don't need the Commonwealth to have dialogue in Zambia. We are very capable, all along, we have had dialogue in this nation. We have had dialogue on our own. Other political parties present at the briefing include Party for Unity, Democracy and Development, Humanity Party and Grassroots Workers Party, among others. We now take our first break. Join us shortly for more news. My life is not bound by being a woman. I'm interested in what I think is important. Romeo Beauty Soap contains natural oils and glycerin that moisturize the skin, leaving it soft and smooth. I don't go around thinking I look beautiful. I know I'm beautiful. A selection. Moisture in so your skin isn't just soft, but better. There are many soaps made for sensitive skin, but there's nothing quite like Romeo Beauty Soap. <sighs> Let your inner beauty come out with Romeo Beauty Soap. Romeo Beauty Soap, everyday luxury for your kind of skin. Trade Kings, improving lives. Feel lekker every day with amazing data bundles on the network that continues to give you more. Now star 355 hash today. Somtel, live life today. Thank you for staying with us. We continue with the news. Minister of Energy Matthew Nkua says the country will not experience load shedding due to the increased water levels in most hydroelectricity generating points. Mr. Nkua says despite the inconsistent rainfall pattern, the country has received adequate water to support power generation. He has, however, noted that if the country will have any load shedding, it will not be related to the water levels but a fault. Mr. Nkua said this in a telephone interview with ZNBC News in Lusaka. In 2015, Zambia was in the middle of a crippling electricity crisis as the country grappled with a 560 megawatt power deficit. This led to the power utility company Zesco embarking on a countrywide power rationing mechanism to preserve the limited water available for power generation until the 2015-2016 rainy season. Now, over 2,000 iron sheets procured by the government through the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, for the flood victims in Chama District, Muchinga Province, have been distributed. Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary, Jopix Kalumba, has told Denise that Chama, in Chama that two more trucks carrying about 1,000 iron sheets are expected to arrive in the district tomorrow. Zanis gives us more on the government, through the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, in the office of the Vice President for the Flood Victims in Chama District of Umchinga Province, have been distributed. 
Muchinga Permanent Secretary Javix Kalumba, who led the joint team in the distribution exercise, says the distribution is expected to be complete next week. Dr. Kalumba has since advised the beneficiaries whose houses collapsed not to sell the own sheets but use them for the intended purpose. The, um, the fulfillment that the government of his excellency the president, Mr. Edgar Chagwa Lungu, has now fulfilled to the people of Uchama district. Beside the provision of uh, food stuff. Chama District Commissioner Lena Dingoma has thanked the government for the quick response to the flood victims, saying the monthly distribution of relief food is going on smoothly. Received all the foodstuffs. Great. Yes, and um, I think we visited them two days ago. Great. They are quite, uh, quite happy. Okay. Chairperson of the Kapalakonje flood victims, Edward Mkandawile, has thanked the government for the assistance. Chagwalungu, Bagwila Nchito Chomene Chifuko Tawantu Tawa Wakusuzika. Ndiyo boma yuvila wantu wantu wakusuzika. Mpo msangu uwa leke kuhuleka. Mapitirie na boma hii pitirie po ingaleka ngapo cha. Fukwa hii sekundo tawantu tika suzikanga. 377 houses collapsed while crops submerged and some infrastructure destroyed in Chama district following heavy rains the area experienced in the month of February and March this year. Jonathan Mkwa reporting for the news in Chama district in Chinga province. Maternal mortality ratios in Muflira are expected to start dropping following the installation of the state-of-the-art ultrasound machine at Kamchanga District Hospital. And Muflira District Commissioner Hilda Kawisha says the modern medical machine will help save lives in the area. Spire South Bank Hospital of the United Kingdom has donated the machine through the Rotary Club of Muflira and Intro Zambia. Chile Shemwamba has details in the following report. Over the modern ultrasound equipment to Kamuchanga District Hospital in Mufulira. The Rotary Club of Mufulira and Intro Zambia have joined hands to donate medical equipment to the hospital. While the hospital already has two similar machines, this one stands out. The machine will help keep track of the growth of pregnant women as well as screen for cervical cancer. Steve Curtis is the founder of Intro Zambia who prompted the donation of this machine. And in Zambia we're grateful to Kalimanshi Transport who agreed free of charge to bring the machine up to Mufalira. So now it is here, it's in, it works, it's a, a really fantastic capability and, uh, and the doctor here I think is going to appreciate the, the, the uh, diagnostic capability that, which will help him to treat patients. Mufulira District Commissioner Hilda Kawisha was present. I wish to thank the Rotarians for this timely donation to Kamchanga District Hospital. This equipment will go a long way in announcing diagnostic, especially in pregnant women, thereby contributing significantly in reducing maternal deaths. President for Mufulira Rotary Club, John Sakala, had this to say. The club has undertaken projects like the drilling of boreholes, provision of uh, desks to community schools. Uh, currently the club is also working on uh, improving water supply to Kamchanga Hospital so that uh, in the event of any water outage, the hospital is not affected and that the operations uh, can continue. Meanwhile, medical officer in charge, Guy Ngalolambikai, also thanked the donors. And I promise, madam, to take care of this machine and to use it in a good manner for the interest of all population here in Mufulira, maybe also for those coming um, in another province, they can also come here because this machine is very performant. Chileshe Mwamba, ZMBC News in Mufulira.
The Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission, CEEC, has unveiled a model for the construction of a $2.5 million industrial yard in Mongo District, Western Province. The industrial yard, which will be constructed in Mongo's Makapaela area, will have warehouses and shops that will be rented by citizens engaged in various entrepreneurial activities. Speaking during the handover of the model to Mongo District Commissioner Susiku Kamona, CEC Director General Ikando Mukumbuta said the industrial yard will be of great benefit to the people of Western Province. Mr. Mukumbuta says CEC is committed to improving the welfare of Zambians who have a passion to do business but lack opportunities to operate in a conducive environment. He disclosed that apart from having high-tech equipment for metal fabrication, timber, agro-processing and auto mechanics, the industrial yards will also serve as training parks for specialized skills for Zambian youths. Strategy. The Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission uh, is uh, supporting the development of industrial yards in Zambia with support from the African Development Bank. The tender process for the construction of the yards has concluded and contracts have been signed. We expect contractors to mobilize by 16th of April. I want also to urge members who are here in the meeting and outside there to ask for land whenever they have got something to do with that land. And the BRE stand ready to give in any land for any governmental programs. Join us for more news just after this break. Tiende pamodzi ndi mtima umo Tiende ndi banjali modzi Aprenda ntomwe amoyo omwe Tiende ponga tuzenge insi Zambia, the promised land, will together achieve our dreams. Zambia, Zambia the, promised land, the promised land, if we, we believe, believe we, we can, can all achieve. Nahaya Luna, if we are Agritech, Zambia's leading agriculture outdoor expo, will take place from 12th to 14th April 2018 in Chistamba. ZNBC, your national broadcaster, will be there to give you maximum stand coverage and exposure. At very attractive sponsorship rates, what are you waiting for? Grab that phone and call our sales and marketing team on 252-005. In more news, the Regional Trade Initiative, RTI, is contracting, constructing 237 shops,
costing 5 million kwacha to empower cross-border traders in Lusaka. RTI President Davis Mwambazi says the project has been funded by courtyard properties and RTI members' contributions. Mr. Mwambazi says the initiative is meant to complement government's efforts in the provision of a conducive trading place. Mary Kachapa reports. The buying and selling of goods and services is an integral part of every society. However, conducive trading space is required for traders to effectively carry out their businesses. Currently, Zambia has a shortfall of trading space and the Regional Traders Initiative, RTI, a group interested in helping traders, has chipped in to complement government's efforts by constructing shops to house cross-border traders and the structures are taking shape while others are already complete. So the RTI has provided spaces, about 237 spaces, that have accommodated even those that were on the streets and most of those that were actually also doing cross-border trade. So this initiative is actually there to empower the women, the young people, and also those that have been doing cross-border trade for a longer period of time. Mr. Makambwe says the project will cost 5 million kwacha. And the trader, Miriam Chilimboi, is happy with the development. It's a good initiative. I've seen people, they've gotten all the shops. So also me, I decided to be part of those who came and have the, the, the shops here. Meanwhile, Regional Traders Initiative President Davis Mwambazi is looking at extending the project to other parts of the country. Yeah, and uh, we are appealing also to the government, I think, as you can see, to the government, I think, to facilitate or to help us to identify more land so that at least we can accommodate all those that have remained. Because most of the people that have come, have come from the streets, from uh, the city market, which was gathered, they're here, they've subscribed, but we still have a lot of number. Because if you look at the, 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 the shops, the, the number that we, we mark for, for full construction, we are about 200, uh, we'll be about 258. So far, we've done 237. Government recently banned street vending following an outbreak of cholera in some parts of the country and is currently constructing trading spaces along Simon Mwara Lane in Lusaka. And this initiative by the Regional Traders Initiative will go a long way in assisting government to realize its resolve to provide conducive trading environment for those in the informal sector. Mary Kachepa, ZNBC News, Lusaka. Chief Mabumba of the Aushi people of Manza district in Wapula province has urged his subjects and those in other chiefdoms to continue supporting traditional leaders. Chief Mabumba complained that some subjects have mistaken subsidies for salaries, resulting in some being reluctant to support chief's palaces materially and in kind following an improvement in monthly government subsidies to traditional rulers. The chief told the NBC News at his palace that people should instead appreciate efforts made by the patriotic front government to ensure chiefs are well looked after for them to effectively work for the people and Manta district commissioner James Nyenjele says it is taboo to even discuss government subsidies with chiefs Mr. Nyenjele says the subsidies are personal entitlements by law while contributions by subjects enable the chiefs to manage local affairs including helping the needy and looking after visitors Moving on to sports news, where the Football Association of Zambia has refuted allegations that it will not table the matter of its expelled vice president, Richard Kazala, at the association's annual general meeting tomorrow. First Deputy Secretary General Adrian Kashala says the fears raised are futile and that the matter will be looked into. Kashala says according to the 2018 AGM agenda circulated to the membership, the association has complied complied with the International Courts of Sports Arbitration, which says that Kazala should plead his case before the council. He says the association wishes to remind its membership that the AGM will be held under the new constitution. Kashala further says attendance will also be strictly in accordance with Article 22 of the new constitution. This is contained in a statement availed to ZNBC News in Lusaka. To end the news, the headlines again.
President Ed Galungu has urged Zambians to use Easter as a special season to reflect on how they can show love, forgiveness, compassion, and renewed hope for the less privileged. The president says this Easter celebration should fill the lives of everyone with peace and keep the nation united. Minister of Foreign Affairs Joe Malangi says the impeachment motion by the opposition UPND has the potential to tarnish the image of the presidency and the country to the international community. Ambassador Malangi, however, says the motion is an exercise in futility. Over 2,000 iron sheets procured by the government through the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit for the flood victims in Chama District, Muchinga Province, have been distributed. Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary Jobix Kalumba has told Denise in Chama that more, two more trucks carrying about 1,000 iron sheets are expected to arrive in the district tomorrow. And the Football Association of Zambia has refuted allegations that it will not table the matter of its expelled Vice President Richard Kazala at the association's annual general meeting tomorrow. First Deputy General Secretary Adrian Kashala says the fears raised are futile and that the matter will be looked into. Well, that's the news this evening. Thank you so much for watching. From me, Penny Fanyarenda, our sign language interpreter, Pastor Sam Somali, and the entire crew on duty, we wish you a blessed Easter weekend. Good night. think that being a mom means a lifetime of chores not getting enough quality time with the fam well not anymore using boom sparkle plus with the new triple power formula dishwashing is now a job no more pilots of dirty dishes for days just one drop takes care of everything just one drop of Boom Sparkle Plus with Triple Power Formula takes care of everything. One bottle of Boom Sparkle Plus will shine 1,000 dishes. And just when you thought that it couldn't get any better, the added lemon and aloe vera leaves my hands softer and smelling fresher than ever before. Once a chore, but now a joy, leaving me with more time to do the things that matter. Enriched with lemon and aloe vera. Now that's a thousand reasons to choose Boom Sparkle Plus. Trade Kings, improving lives.